Hello and welcome to my presentation about the OpenStreetMap SketchMap tool. I'm Caroline Kloner from Heidelberg University and I'm happy to show you this new tool that can be used to visualize flood risk perception for disaster risk reduction. Worldwide, more and more people are affected by flooding. I have an example here from Eberbach, a city close to Heidelberg. They have to face river flooding regularly, but they have flood maps and they know about water levels, so they are prepared. But how about other parts of the world where no historic data are available or where the area is very remote and where there is not sufficient money for disaster risk reduction? These people are even more vulnerable. How can they protect themselves better and how can we support? And the answer is a source of information which is currently not used so often. The citizens themselves. Because people in affected areas have knowledge about flood levels, frequency of floods and they have specific ways of dealing with these floods. And this knowledge is very important for the disaster risk reduction pro process. But the question is now, how can we engage these people and integrate them into the disaster risk reduction uh, process? And how can we make this knowledge that they have and the stories that they tell us, uh, yeah, how can we make this in a form that we can use it uh, with computers, for example, analyze the data? So how to transform this knowledge into a digital way? And uh, in, yeah, so that local stakeholders and scientists can use it. And um, we have also to integrate different sciences because it's subjective data and um, we are yeah, integrating people. So we also need to consider social sciences and humanities and not only natural sciences. So we have here an interdisciplinary approach and a transdisciplinary approach because we are dealing with uh, local stakeholders and citizens. And the answer to the question how to formalize this knowledge and how to engage the people is the approach of the sketch maps. Sketch maps can visualize flood risk perception. And I will show you now the process of this participatory mapping approach. First of all, there are the OpenStreetMap field papers and these papers are used as a base map. You can design a field paper map online of your study area and then you can go into the field and participants can mark their risk perception on this map. Here you see an example of Eberbach and the base is uh, the uh, OpenStreetMap field paper map. And on this, the people mark their risk perception here in pink. And this marked map I call a sketch map. Afterwards, you can take a picture of this uh, marked field paper or you can scan the field paper and you can upload it to the website where it is automatically georeferenced. Afterwards, you can use it for digitization. We also uh, use the, the approach of the sketch maps in the waterproofing data project in the study areas in Rio Branco and in Emboimirim in Brazil last year. And we used the maps on DNA0 format for group discussions because we um, realized that it's very important to engage 
more people in the discussion in order to get more knowledge about the context. And here you see an example map where people mark their risk perception and elements at risk during a group discussion. Furthermore, the um, field papers, they are both based on OpenStreetMap data and so it can be um, yeah, edited and data can be added by, for example, students from this area. And so we did some mapping activities to add buildings, for example, as some of the data is still sparse in Rio Branco. And we saw that this approach is um, not that sustainable yet as we would wish, because we it would be really nice that uh, people um, can use it themselves. So if a local government in Brazil, for example, decides, okay, we need some uh, information about flooding, let's do the mapping, it's still quite uh, difficult because they need to know about um, the quality of the OpenStreetMap data, if they can apply the field papers for the participatory mapping. And they also need to have some um, knowledge about uh, GIS. And furthermore, the, it also wasn't there um, the option to um, choose the DNA zero format. So we just enlarged it, but the resolution was not so good anymore then. Therefore, um, we decided to do our own tool, the OpenStreetMap SketchMap tool, because there was no software developer in charge anymore for the OpenStreetMap field paper homepage. That's why we decided to do our own tool. And this tool here, you can see the uh, current design. And um, here you have the option now to um, select your study area, and then you will get. Um, some feedback for the quality of the OSM data. So you will get, for example, a green light and then you know, okay, the data quality is uh, enough for your mapping. So um, people will be able to orientate themselves in the area to do the marking. If not, you will get recommendations and uh, it will say, for example, that you should do some more mapping and to have sufficient landmarks, for example. Furthermore, you now have uh, the option to choose different paper formats for printing, also including DNA Zero for group mapping. And finally, you also have the option to upload a sketch map for the automatic georeferencing. So to have here a summary of the um, features of the OpenStreetMap, SketchMap tool. Um, I will show you some of the points here. So first of all, we have the um, yeah the fact that it's open source, and this is very important if we want to have it sustainable. Because especially in the vulnerable areas, there is not uh, the money for uh, licenses and so on. Furthermore, we have the automatic analysis of OSM data. So um, I, as a researcher, don't need to go there. I have the experience with the OSM data. Yeah, I could tell them if it's good enough, but now they can also do it themselves. So they can just click on the button and then they get the, uh, the answer, okay, the data is good, without having the experience from previous studies. Furthermore, you have the different paper sizes. And so you see, with all these steps, it's possible to formalize and visualize the lo local knowledge of the citizens. And we also added another um, option now so that you can have this uh, marked areas digitized automatically. And um, you can um, do it with one click, all the steps, so you don't need to be a GIS expert for analyzing your data. So you see we have here analog spatial data, which is now um, yeah, available in digital format. And this offers now also to combine this local knowledge with other geodata, for example, flood maps. 
now I've presented you the approach for flooding, but sketch maps can also be applied for various intra and transdisciplinary research, research questions. And it's always in the cases where risk perception is involved or perception in general. So, for example, about urban heat islands or noise pollution. And there can be uh, made uh, recommendations, for example, for the city development. If you would like to uh, read some more about the group mapping, or about uh, the data evaluation of uh, yeah, the OSM data, uh, you can have a look at our publications and you can also uh, contact me directly. And if you would like to read uh, some more about the research in Brazil, you can uh, check out our waterproofing data project um, homepage. And we are closely working together with the Heidelberg Institute for Geoinformation Technology. And um, yeah, I'm very happy um, to receive your feedback and I'm looking forward to your comments.